Good afternoon, it is Saturday, March 25th, and this is now my third drive with FSD Beta 11.3.3. Um, I'm going to be going to my parents' house, which is about a 20 minute trip to the North Metro. Uh, I'm gonna take a slightly different route this time. Uh, we do have road construction season starting here in a few weeks, and a common route that I take on 37th Avenue Northeast, unfortunately, has a uh, um, it's going to be torn up and completely redone this year for like five or six months. So I'm going to have to start taking this route here for most of my drives going forward here in the near future. So I kind of want to show you kind of what where things are at and have a baseline that we can leverage going forward. So um, You would have noticed right off the bat too, just like with every drive that I start from my neighborhood, I do intervene adjust the speed limit the car defaults to 30 miles per hour and 20 miles per hour is the default across the entire city and has been that way for a few years the data is still wrong so i have to adjust and of course there's no signs really posted once you get into the neighborhood so unless the car has some sort of contextual awareness or updated map data um you know it's going to make the wrong decision which it does so A lot of caution with that right turn, even though it was clear. I think it's just begun because of the poor visibility. So, and I'm going to have to, oh, there it goes. All right, so we were able to get the car. I'm slowing the car down here again. Um, there's some really rough tracks up here, and unless you live in the area, you're not going to know. Like this person here is doing 30. It's a really rough section of road. You can kind of almost bottom out any modern car, unfortunately, through that section. So, um this slowing down at about 20 miles an hour makes it a lot less rough. So, um, again, the car, you know, would be fine more than likely. I just, I'm a nut when it comes to going over big bumps like that slowly. <laughs> Good job with that left turn there, no issues. All right, now that we've gotten it to take that, that new route there, I have I've kind of tricked the navigation system out with a couple different nav changes there. I'm gonna to switch to my parents' address, which will get us the rest of the way. All right, and you'll see again, the behavior is pretty, pretty common with version 11 so far at empty intersections and just all four-way stops. You'll see that the indicated speed will now go all the way to zero for at least a second before it does start to proceed. So it does pause a little bit longer than we've been used to in the version 10 builds. I feel like with NHTSA, what they've asked for there is just, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a very deep topic. I'm sure there's there's many sides to that. Sorry, my GoPro cut out there, but um, you know, I guess where I'm coming from, and again, the car hesitates way too much at this intersection. I'm pressing the throttle to get through. Um, so again, like inter these, this intersection here is the intersection of 37th Avenue Northeast and 5th Street Northeast. It, for whatever reason, the car just really struggles there and really is concerned about every like and not being able to see. I would love to know what it what it can't see through. I know there was a telephone pole there. There are some basic occlusions, but like, I, I mean, even so, especially in broad daylight like this, you can see really quickly if there's any other cars at that four-way stop. So, not sure why it hesitates the way it does there. But anyways, a little bit of throttle intervention. I do continue to report that behavior there. Again, it's safe, but when you, commonly on that street, I always have people behind me and never to my left or right. So we end up kind of clogging up traffic coming through there. So that's kind of why I bring stuff up like that, like that up, because it just makes FSD, you know, the use of it a little more annoying when it shouldn't have to be, right? So um, would love to know some, you know, it says visibility on the screen, but like there's nothing there. So. There needs to be more tuning on that side of the house still to make the car less hesitant, you know, especially at empty intersections like that. So, 
anyways, but great job with that right turn. Again, we continue to use the shared turn lane there. Um, that's something that stayed in all the V11 builds so far that really wasn't consistently there in the 10.x builds. So I'm um, happy to see that feature and functionality still there. hesitation there and a bit of braking even though that car was completely out of our lane there I'm going to report that just a minor inconvenience there nobody was really behind us but the, the, the braking input there was a little too much so those cars were clearly going to be out of our path or already were out of our path and yet the car still felt like it needed to hit the brakes a little bit too, too much there so good job uh, for FSD there getting over within our lane away from that semi even though that semi was in a turn lane I still love that behavior um, so glad it's still there in 11.3.3 so one thing that I want to call out here for whatever reason on uh, US 10 West um, as it transitions from 47 into 10, uh, the car, you saw it briefly, it, it, it negates the speed offset, even though it's really the same stretch of road. Um, I you could probably say that area back there is a transition, but the transition is really when the speed limit goes to 65 way back, um, like maybe a mile or so back, you know, so not a fan of that behavior. Um, it was very jarring with the way that Navigate and Autopilot used to slow down. It was so abrupt. So you go from 73, for example, to 65, you know, under a second. It's kind of jarring and surprising anybody on board. So um, I let it do its thing this time just to see what it would do. It slows down, obviously, just because of the trend, like there's the deceleration profile that's in FSD Bay at 11 on highway and city is much smoother. So that issue is a lot less of a problem. But uh, if somebody was behind us, they would still be an annoyance to slow down like that for no reason, right? So um, maybe after two or three seconds, though, you saw the car go back to the correct offset that I have set in the system and accelerate back to that speed. So net-net, a very minor thing, but just something I wanted to call out. I'm not sure I agree with that lane change. Our, uh, our exit's coming up here in about a half a mile, a little, little over that. Um, and this person looks to be speeding back up here, so we're gonna have to get back over to the right lane. Uh, I'm gonna let the car do its thing, though. Man, somebody looks like they blew a motor back there. That's not a good, good sign. <laughs> I don't know if you can see all the white smoke in the, the oncoming lanes, but... Somebody looks like they lost a head gasket or something. Not good. Sure smells like it. <laughs> Alright, so we're exiting uh, US 10 West now onto Main Street. And what I'm going to be looking for up here is the line selection around this curve. Interesting behavior there. I've never seen it do that before. It's never tried to get in that lane before ever. Interesting. It did figure itself out there, but I've never seen that before, so I am going to report that. Um, you know, both these turn lanes go and follow the route, but basically I would say I've done this route with FSD 50 plus times, I bet, and taken that same exit, and every single time up until now, it's picked the leftmost lane, the turn lane. So 
that's kind of why I'm like kind of surprised by that. But at the end of the day, I, I don't really care at the end of the day as long as it picks one of these two turn lanes. We are going to have to make another lane change to get over because uh, eventually we are making a we're making like three left turns in a row. So we need to eventually get over to that far left lane at some point. Good job staying in this middle lane. That's been a problem that I've noticed with Beta where it sometimes loses its place as it's making it a left turn like that, especially if the lane, uh, the turn lanes aren't marked. All right, we're gonna have to get over here and then make basically two lane changes here. Let's see if it can do it. Good job again of getting over. It's the second time today I've noticed that behavior. Um, but again, it could be avoided if we had made that first lane selection when we exited the freeway and made that correctly. We, we could have avoided that behavior there, but I'm glad it's at least assertive enough to kind of fix itself. Um, but yeah, the lane selection issues continue to be an issue, it seems like. And, you know, I can't say this one's map data because it's done the right thing every other time except for this time. So the only thing that's changed is the code in V11. So we're on 11.3.3 now. So something must have changed. Oh, I'm going to actually probably go back there today and th through that same section and see if I can get it to repeat the behavior if that was just a, a one-off. But... Right. Good job with that left turn. We may have stayed a little further away from that outside curb this time around compared to my last drive with uh, 3.2. But again, good job comfortably slowing down from 30 miles per hour to make this right turn. All right. So that's pretty much this drive. Um, you know, for the most part, uneventful. Our first zero disengagement drive with 11.3.3 uh, um, so far. So overall, just the only annoyance of that drive that I want to call out is the behavior that we experienced when we exited Highway 10 there. Never seen that before. I'm going to go back and probably add a clip onto this video of just showing what happens when I went, go back to that same section maybe another one or two times. So anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, so I wanted to kind of come back um, to the exit of US 10 West where we come on to Main Street. And I want to see what the car does here, if it repeats the same behavior that was new, for me anyways, with 11.3.3. The car should go to the left turn lane now. Let's see if it does it here. All right. Interesting. So this is what the car has done every single time up until today, uh, where I recorded it earlier, where it kind of was over and to the right for whatever reason and entered and actually used the right turn lane here. Um, which does work, but it causes some more, you know, issues down the road because we have to get over two other lanes. So I'm going to come back through the same section again and just see what the car does here. So we have three total samples just to rule any outliers either way out. So see you in a bit. All right. So this is attempt number three where we're exiting US 10 West on the main street here. And um, again, I'm just looking to see what FSD does here for lane selection. We should be getting in the leftmost turn lane here. And again, we're seeing that similar behavior that I saw earlier, which this is two times now out of three where I've seen this behavior. So there seems to be a little bit of a regression here that I've noticed, and the car is figuring it out. There wasn't room in the first attempt um, to do exactly that. So. You know, overall, I'm fine with it making the mistake 
as long as it doesn't, you know, it puts us in one of these two turn lanes. If it completely missed both of them, then we got other issues. But I'd still like to know why it does that, because this is the first time ever I've seen this behavior. And I've, like I said, I've taken this route with FSD Beta over the last couple of years, 50 plus times. So it's really interesting to see um, a change like that, but not unexpected. I know they're constantly tuning things in the back end, so um, stuff like this can happen, right? Um, but it's, it's the real first regression that I've seen along my route so far with 11.3.3. But as you saw, the car did a great job figuring it out uh, before it was too late. Got over to the rightmost turn lane, and then when it was clear to do so, we actually made a, a lane change over to the far left one as well. So um, I don't expect any other issues along this route. We've done this plenty of times before. And obviously, the, the video that I'm attaching this to um, will, will demonstrate that. So... Anyways, um, there's three samples for you, and two out of the three, it did something different there. So anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.